Welcome from me, Guy Monson, to our regular six-minute strategy. Equity markets have continued to rally this quarter, but market leadership is starting to shift. There's been a tentative recovery in value in yield stocks, which have lagged dramatically for much of the past 18 months, while a rally in global technology and AI-linked firms has correspondingly started to correct. The shift has coincided with political developments in the United States, where a Trump victory is increasingly becoming the base case in the eyes of global markets. Indeed, a Republican sweep of both houses and the presidency is a genuine possibility. So why should a Trump administration trigger a potential change in equity market leadership? The key reason is the trajectory of the federal deficit and the huge impact of a new administration making Trump's 2017 tax cuts permanent. It could cost up to $4.7 trillion. While yes, some of this borrowing might be offset by government receipts from Trump's tariff proposals, the impact is highly uncertain. So the market's reaction is logical. While the Federal Reserve is expected to start cutting rates in September and then at each quarter through 2025, the fiscal risk associated with the Trump administration could still push long-term rates higher. In other words, the yield curve is poised to steepen, and this typically acts as a drag on long-duration assets like growth stocks. We'll look at this in more detail in the slides ahead and see what it means for your portfolio. So welcome to Peter to a six-minute strategy again. And before we dig into the politics uh, and what that means for markets, can I just update viewers and clients on market returns for the year to date? The star has been gold, that light blue line, up almost 20%. I think that's fears over the deficit. And also emerging economies in particular, putting more gold into their reserves for security, if you like. Uh, the dark blue line global equities up a robust 15%. Everything else broadly flat. The uh, dollar there in yellow up 2%, gilt's broadly flat, treasury's broadly flat, and most other commodity markets. So it's been a two-horse race. If on the right you lift the bonds a little bit uh, on equities, it's quite interesting what's happening. Growth still led value, that lot dark blue line, but by a much smaller margin over the last few months, as we've seen a rebound, particularly this week, of value and dividend yield stocks as AI stocks have corrected. What's causing this? Well, that yellow line momentum is probably the key. That's where what went up yesterday goes up again today and the days that follow. And that momentum buildup is a little bit worrying, and it's why we've pulled back a little bit of our exposure to those very successful AI names. And off about markets, let's dive into politics, uh, Sabita. And I think financial markets are basically now assuming Trump win is the base case. And that has quite a lot of implications. Yes, you're absolutely right. So after almost a year of being in a dead heat with President Biden, Trump now has decisively pulled ahead. I think the odds of him winning the presidency on the 5th of November are more than 60 percent, which is really an incredibly strong lead. But more importantly, in all the six key uh, swing states, so Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin and Michigan, Trent's lead is, um, Trump's lead is now quite considerable. Yeah. And I think the thing to consider here is that it's not just the presidency. There's also the point that when you go to um, vote, uh, voters will start to have the down ballot uh, preference for Republicans. So we're looking increasingly at a clean sweep for the Republican Party. So that means Congress and the Senate, which of course gives him huge power to really drive an aggressive legislation bill into reality. Um, this is going to be particularly important, of course, for environmental standards, for drilling. Where do you see some of these priorities of his early legislative push? So Trump does not like regulation. That is very clear. Republicans typically don't like regulation. So you can see from the chart here, which really looks at the regulatory rules that are imposed on the economy in um, you know, Republican and Democratic uh, presidencies. The Republican ones are in red. Democrats are in dark blue. And you can see in the early years of the Trump presidency, there was a sharp sort of crashing of uh, rules that were imposed on society. So they're very clear. They do not like the Environmental Protection Agency and the standards they impose. Uh, they want to reduce the fuel efficiency standards. They want to allow oil and gas companies to continue to yeah. drill, reduce permitting requirements. They want to eliminate net neutrality, which really hampers internet service providers in the ability to charge their customers. And then finally, I think the really important point here as well is the Chevron deference was struck down by the Supreme Court. 
uh, that was about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And that really is quite an important uh, uh, point for deregulation because now federal agencies no longer have the authority to interpret the law and they will be challenged by the courts. So, you know, there will be much more friction. In and yet more power to the executive. Give you a quick view on antitrust because we heard J.D. Vance's speech to the new uh, vice presidential nominee and there was a sort of background aggression a little bit against big tech. Is this something we, we know yet how Trump views that uh, position? So Trump is quite ambiguous about big tech, but J.D. Vance is very clear. He has supported Lena Khan, uh, the head of the FTC under President Biden, in all her antitrust uh, suits against big tech. So it's unclear, but they, I think they might have a slight preference uh, to sort of regulate them. Putting all this together, what does it mean for the deficit? We've got this big number of 4.7 trillion for the cost of the tax increases. Where does that take us on the midterm in terms of deficits, percentage of GDP, etc.? So the U.S., we saw a couple of weeks ago that the U.S. deficit was already forecast by the Congressional Budget Office to be around 6% of GDP over the next 10 years. Now, if these tax cuts are then um, sort of come into place and become permanent, um, the, tax, the deficit is likely to rise by roughly 0.5 to 1%. Uh, President Trump has talked about paying for these by imposing tariffs, on all trading partners of 10% and about 60% on tariffs on China. Uh, but as you can see from the chart on the right, they don't go far enough and they're not nearly enough uh, to really pay for the tax. So you think even additional draw on the 6% or so deficits we're expecting in the years ahead uh, uh, up to 2034? Yes. And I think just to wrap up, that's what markets are worrying about. They're happy about the short term inflation dynamics and they're definitely improving. And I think we can expect A, the Federal Reserve to start cutting in September, probably two cuts this year, every quarter next year. We can also see it getting a bit more worried about unemployment, the dual mandate, if you like, coming back. But in the longer term, there looks to be upward pressure on bond yields from this deficit. And that means the yield curve beginning to steepen. Yes, so I think we have deficits now becoming more intransigent over the medium term. Yes. We have also, we've got tariffs to consider, and it's not just that they raise the price of imports in the first year. They also mean that actually the Republican plan is to onshore more jobs in the US, which really will make the yeah. labor market much tighter and wages much more resilient. So this for us means higher bond yields for longer. That means a steeper curve. That tends to counter the performance of long duration assets. Yes, long dated bonds, but also technology stocks where the returns are very much in the future. So this change in leadership in the market seems like a logical response. Well, I hope that's helpful. I hope it gives you an idea of how a Trump clean sweep might impact markets and what it means for your portfolio. Thank you.